Sarah Palin's Fox News show, Real American Stories, debuts tomorrow, April 1st, sharing the real American stories of LL Cool J and Toby Keith, which it turns out has come as a big surprise to LL Cool J and Toby Keith. Our number one story turns out the whole thing is an April Fool's joke, although evidently an unintentional one. As a Fox News press release detailed, the show is, or at least was, to tell real-life tales of overcoming adversity and would include special guests like country singer Toby Keith, rapper and actor LL Cool J, and the former chairman and CEO of General Electric, the parent company of NBC Universal, Jack Welch. You can never get him for an interview. Mr. Cool J and Mr. Welch read the release. will both speak about their success in this country in a segment entitled In Their Own Words, prompting the Weekly Standard's Mary Catherine Hamm to fawn the more time LL Cool J spends in a Fox News studio, the closer I get to meeting him, and for that I owe Sarah Palin many thanks. Ham, I don't think so. Ms. Ham can save the thank you note for another time. LL Cool J will not be spending time in a Fox News studio anytime soon, because he already did, 18 months ago. Mr. Cool J tweeting, Fox lifted an old interview I gave in 2008 to someone else and are misrepresenting to the public in order to promote Sarah Palin's show. Wow! Fox News announcing it would pull the interview from the show and being real nice about it. Real American Stories features uplifting tales about overcoming adversity, and we believe Mr. Smith's interview fit that criteria. However, as it appears that Mr. Smith does not want to be associated with a program that could serve as inspiration to others, we are cutting his interview from the special, and we wish him the best with his fledgling acting career. And now, Fox has another problem on its hands with the same show. Toby Keith, slated to explain the inspiration behind his song, Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, you know, the one with the lyric, We'll put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. His publicist telling the New York Times, I had no idea that this was going to be on Sarah Palin's special. Fox has never contacted me, not now, not when they were putting this together, not at all. I have no idea what they're using. Now it turns out it was for an interview, or using an interview they did a year ago with him. Joining me now is MSNBC political analyst, the author of Renegade, The Making of a President, Richard Wolf. Richard, good evening. Good evening, Keith. I can't recall the last time Sarah Palin surprised me. But how could anybody screw up something so obvious as the marriage between Sarah Palin and Fox <laughs> News? You know, Keith, your, your question is refreshingly quaint. Uh, it, it's almost like you believe that the words real American stories has something to do with reality. I mean, that's like saying fair and balance has something to do with fairness and balance. The, the idea here is, if you need some explanation, that this is a story of overcoming adversity, of, of a triumph, of inspiration. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a bit like being a sort of, you know, one-time flute player and, and part-time TV sportscaster in Anchorage and, and going on to serve half a term as governor and still hosting your own TV show and leading a political movement. This show is a triumph over adversity and, mm -hmm. if needs be, reality. It is itself inspiration. A, a triumph over reality. I agree with you on that point. That she also, I think they're showing video of her swimming the English Channel. Now, uh, <laughs> that's Sarah Palin. Now, we, we'll get to LL Cool J in a second, but this budding Toby Keith thing, is that the real problem here? I mean, wouldn't the supporters of either of them be mystified that these two people would have a rift? Yeah, you would think so, uh, although it's interesting seeing the New York Times, I mean, it is, uh, mm -hmm. as someone might call it, the lamestream media. The New York Times uh, has quoted his publicist saying that they uh, never got an email from them uh, from Fox News, so it's a surprise even to the publicist, never mind to the poor interviewee. Uh, but Toby Keith is a kind of interesting guy. I mean, he uh, obviously uh, is uh, on the conservative side of things. He's called himself a conservative Democrat, says he's a friend of James Jones, the national security advisor, huh. also a friend of Bill Richardson. So, I mean, this this okay. guy's all over the place. That's well. Uh, apparently, he's he's not being interviewed by Sarah Palin. They've now admitted that she didn't do any of these interviews. She's just the front person for the show. Ab right. About LL Cool J, Fox used that that standard dismissive "we wish him luck" nonsense in the press release. But we did didn't we just watch a sort of fascinating dynamic in play? First, Fox found him inspirational, and he was sort of the headliner or one of the headliners for this unravel, unrolling, I almost said unraveling of Sarah Palin's first show, but it's already unraveled. But then he called them on this corner cutting, and suddenly he's not inspirational anymore. He's just a fledgling actor. 
No, not inspirational. But I, you've got to hand it to the, uh, the the comics at the Fox uh, press office. They they actually could have their own show. It would be like Thirty Rock because uh, they they cut it up every single night, and uh, uh, it's 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 just a laugh a minute. It's just uh, it's it's funny in how they try and stretch this stuff to to pretending like uh, the stories hang together. Mm -hmm. And also one interesting thing: the only press releases I've ever seen where the quotes are anonymous. Nobody wants to put their names. They don't have the courage to put their names to this crap. It's hilarious in its own way. But I want to get one journalistic question here. Not that Fox believes it's bound by, you know, journalistic rules, but if she says, I interviewed LL Cool J, or they say she interviewed LL Cool J, obviously that would be beyond the pale. But if you don't say it in the promos, you simply imply it. Is that legitimate even at, at Fox News? Well, the promos are one thing, but uh, the idea that she talked to people, uh, that they are guests in a lineup, uh, mm -hmm. it isn't just about a sort of marketing trick here. A and in particular, you know, the New York Times has latched on to something that was in Fox Nation, which apparently does have something to, f uh, to do with Fox News. Uh, it, it, takes, it takes this whole idea of promotion to uh, another level. So, yeah, it would be nice if the real American stories were somehow real. Uh, whose uh, great idea was it, by the way, to, to launch a Sarah Palin TV show on April Fool's Day? <laughs> you know, every day is April Fool's Day. It's a bit like, you know, I wish it could be Christmas every day, but mm -hmm. uh, it is April Fool's Day all the time on Fox News, especially for people who watch it. Last question. Yes, is, is she going to use a teleprompter? <laughs> <laughs> you know, only dead fish go with the flow, and uh, only dead fish read teleprompters. All right, well, I'm sitting here reading a teleprompter, and I remember the day that you did this show, you read a teleprompter, too. And so. I was pretty dead, too. <laughs> That's right, so. <laughs> Richard hey, Wolf. That, was, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> Richard Wolf of MSNBC, great thanks as always.